The Biden administration is making a big investment in new technology to help combat climate change. The U.S. will fund giant direct air capture vacuums in Texas and Louisiana aimed at sucking out greenhouse gas emissions from the atmosphere. Although the technology is relatively untested, there are already some carbon-sucking vacuums in use in other countries. Wow. For more <laughs> on this, uh, we're going to bring in Evan Halper now. He's a business reporter covering the energy transition for the Washington Post. This is the kind of thing that sounds like a joke, right? Is this a parody? I'm wondering, are we out of ideas as far as just putting less CO2 into the atmosphere? But explain for us how this works, how much CO2 it can remove, and how hopeful we should be about its potential. So at this point, I wouldn't be too hopeful, but um, you know, this is a technology that was very much on the fringe not too long ago, and it just seemed absurd, the idea of building these giant vacuums, like industrial scale vacuums to, to suck carbon from the air because it takes so much energy to run these vacuums, and right. you know, the, the, the economy of scale still is, is, is hard to figure out. But um, you know we're we're sort of at this point where we're running out of runway to to, to keep warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, and we're sort of it's a what they would say an all shots on goal, uh, you know policy at this point. And this is one technology that we're putting quite a bit of money into trying out. So how much is this going to cost? So these two projects you mentioned, the one in Texas and the one in Louisiana, they're the first of, we're not sure how many, there were 11 applications for these direct air capture hubs, as, as they're called. Uh, the first two are getting $1.2 billion in grants. I think there's $3.5 billion total allocated, but that's just the start because, you know, that's grant money. And then if this carbon can be captured successfully, uh, there would be tax credits for capturing the carbon. Um, you know, at which point we're talking billions of dollars more, but it's all contingent on the, uh, the technology actually working. And we just shared a really useful map there showing where in the country, not just Louisiana and Texas, that these, I guess, what are we calling them? <laughs> Carbon sucking machines <laughs> might be placed mm -hmm. in the US. Um, do they make a lot of noise? Um, how unseemly are they? <laughs> you know, I mean, what? You know, they're, it's industrial machinery, so they yeah. look like massive fans. Um, you know, you, you you wouldn't want one in your backyard. Um, they tend to be in places like, you know, they could be in an industrial park or the one uh, that they're building in Texas, for example, is um, in the Corpus Christi area, which is a big petrochemical uh, industrial area where they're building it. So, um, so yeah, this is industrial equipment, but in, in some ways no different than, you know, other factories are, are big and noisy. Are they generally not going to be near populated areas? You know, it's hard to know. I mean, this is, we're so early in the process. There's a big one in Iceland right now. It seems like it's in a pretty remote area. Um, you know, there's there's these little test projects around, but to, to really make a dent in, you know, greenhouse gas emissions, you need to build just a lot of these things. You need, you need to build them really big. And so my, you know, I would suspect that when they start really building this out, they're going to be in industrial areas and, you know, not in, in, the, in the middle of residential communities because there's, there's sort of no need to put them there. And Evan, you kind of alluded to this. It, it seems like just human desperation because we're out of ideas. A UN panel found, or I guess warned, that these vacuums are, quote, technologically and economically unproven, especially at scale, and pose unknown environmental and social risks. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah, the, uh, you know, you, you just need to look outside to know the situation is desperate. And, you know, we're, we're way behind where we need to be in terms of cutting emissions, in terms of transitioning away from fossil fuels. And so we're looking at these these other kind of moonshot ideas that are, uh, you know, they, they do give a sense of the desperate point we're at. Um, you know, on the other hand, the technology for some of these things, they just seem like they couldn't work and were ridiculous maybe 10 years ago. There's a case to be made that they can be part of a solution. But, you know, on the flip side, there's worry that people will see, oh, OK, they're just going to put these giant vacuums out there and suck the emissions out and we can go on living as we've been living. And so there's worry that these technologies that don't really even work yet uh, are going to give people a sense of complacency that, you know, there's a technological solution to this and lifestyles don't need to be changed. And this is getting figured out when it really is. Good right. point. Evan, thank you. Thanks, Evan. Thank you for having me.